Hello everyone, welcome to another Picky Board Gamers episode. My name is Hector Rakos and today's teach is going to be rather simple and short as I'll be explaining Onirim here. Onirim is a funny little card game that plays mainly as a solo but also offers a two-player cooperative mode. Now, this box includes seven expansions offering tons of replayability but as I always do in my videos, I will only explain the normal rules for a solo and the extra rules for a two-player game. Now, let us not lose more time and let's start. Onirim is a game that simply uses a deck of cards, so let's start by checking the card types that are included in this set. The game cards are mainly split to four different colors, but there is also a set of 10 Black Nightmare cards, which are the bad cards and simply make what we're trying to do in this game more difficult. Let's set aside the Nightmare cards for now. In each one of the colors, there are exactly two cards, which are the Oniric Doors. These are the cards the player needs to find in order to escape from his dream. Now, apart from the two Oniric Doors, the rest of the cards in each color are split to three suit. We have Sun cards, we have fewer Moon cards and even fewer Key cards. Now, these cards help the player find the Oniric Doors of the corresponding colors. Apart from their symbol, these are almost the same, but keep in mind that key cards have some more functions that I will explain at the right time. To set up the game, simply shuffle all the cards together and place them face down in a stack. The player starts the game with 5 cards which he draws from the top of this stack. If the player happens to draw any door or any nightmare cards, he simply sets them aside and keep drawing cards until he has 5 non-door and non-nightmare cards. If there are any set-aside cards, the player shuffles them back in the stack and the game is now ready to start. Let's imagine that the game uses four virtual areas. One is in the middle, which is the labyrinth, and it's the main playing area where the player will be playing his cards one on top of the other in a way so that he finds the oniric doors. I will explain this, of course, in a little bit. We have a door area where players place their doors after they find them. We have a limbo area, some cards will be placed in the limbo area and after that they will be shuffled in the stack again. And finally we have a discard area where players place their discarded cards. After the 8th oniric door is placed in the door area, the player instantly wins the game. A player's turn includes three phases. First the player plays a card then he draws cards from the stack to bring his hand back to 5 cards and finally if there are any cards in the limbo area they are shuffled back in the stack. If before finding the 8 oniric doors the player needs to draw a card from the stack and the stack is out of cards then the player is out of time and automatically loses the game. So in the first phase of the turn the player plays a card from his hand. There are two options. The player plays the card either in his labyrinth or straight into the discard pile. When a player plays a card in the labyrinth for first time, he simply starts a sequence of cards. Cards played in the labyrinth area remain in that area for the rest of the game. The next time a player plays a card in the labyrinth will be done in such a way so that all previous cards are still visible. The player may play any card from his hand in the labyrinth. The only limitation is that he may never play a card with the same symbol as the previous card. The player's objective is to place three cards in a row of the same color. When he does that, he finds an oniric door of the corresponding color, provided of course that these doors are not already in his door area. When this happens, the player searches the deck of cards for a door of the corresponding color, places it in the door area and reshuffles the cards. Instead of playing a card in the labyrinth, the player may also choose to play a card in the discard pile, mainly because he doesn't want to break the sequence in his labyrinth. If a player continues with a fourth card of the same color, it's as if he starts a new set of three cards. If, however, the player discards a key card in the discard pile, then he triggers a prophecy. When a player triggers a prophecy, he takes the five topmost cards from the deck and then he must discard any one card of these in the discard pile. Finally, he fixes the order of the rest of the cards in any way he likes and places them on top of the stack. 
There are three special uses for the key cards and that was the first one of them. After the player played one card, he must draw cards to bring his hand back to five cards, simply by drawing the top card from the stack. Now, if this is a symbol card, he places it with his other cards in his hand. However, if the card was not a symbol card and was a door card, then this card goes in the limbo area and the player takes the next card. And now we come to the second use of a key card. If a player draws a door card at this face and he has a key of the same color as the door, then he may discard this key and place this door straight in the door area. Now, last but not least, if the card drawn is a nightmare card, it has to be resolved immediately. The negative effect is that the player loses cards to the discard pile faster. The player must choose either to discard all the cards from his hand to the discard pile and get new 5 cards from the stack the same way he did at the start of the game, setting aside any other nightmare or door cards and reshuffling them in the stack. The second option is to take the 5 top cards from the stack, set aside in the limbo area any door or nightmare cards and discard the rest cards in the discard pile. The player, however, may avoid the bad effect of the Nightmare card by discarding a key card from his hand to the discard pile and that's the third use of a key card. Alternatively, a player may avoid the bad effects by sacrificing any found on Eric door and shuffling it back in the stack. After the Nightmare card has been resolved, then it is moved in the discard pile as well. After the player replenishes his hand to 5 cards, then the round proceeds to phase 3 where we simply reshuffle any cards that might be in the limbo area back in the stack. After that the round is over and we begin a new round. We play a card, we draw a card and we reshuffle cards from the limbo area. We continue this until one of the two game outcomes has been triggered. We have either found the 8 oniric doors or we are out of time and we lose the game. The game can also be played with two, where players cooperate against the game. There are a few rule changes, however. During setup, players draw cards from the top of the stack until they have a common set of eight location cards. If you happen to draw door or nightmare cards during this process, reshuffle them back in the stack as normal. Now players start a short drafting process until both players have three cards each. These three cards will form their personal resources and the two cards they didn't pick will be the shared resources which both of them can use. The cards regarded as the player's hand during his turn are his personal resources as well as the shared resources. So a player on his turn may play any card of these either to his labyrinth or discard it to the discard pile. When he discards a card, on top of that, he may also swap one of his personal supplies with one of the shared supplies. During phase 2, the player replenishes cards so that he brings his personal supplies back to 3 or the shared supplies back to 2. If during a nightmare effect a player chooses to discard his cards, then he will discard his personal as well as the shared resources. The rest follows as normal. Last but not least, each player keeps his own sequence of cards, his own labyrinth that is. Again here, players need to find the 8 oniric doors, but each player must find 4, one of each color. When that happens, then both players win. If they are out of time, they collectively lose the game. And that was a rather short video for today and I hope you liked it. If you want to support our channel, please subscribe and until next time, have fun and play more board games.